Hello everyone and welcome to the upgrade from Joomla 2.5 to 3.0 webinar sponsored by cloudaccess.net. My name is Bernie, I'll be your host for today's presentation and Jen B is also available. She's going to be basically the host too. She's going to tell me what to do today. Hey Jen, how are you? Hi Bernie, good. Good. Jen's going to walk us through the process of upgrading a site from Joomla 2.5 to Joomla 3.0 for both cloudaccess.net clients and clients who are considering coming to our network. So we're assuming that most of you folks are, uh, are already hosted with cloudaccess.net, but you may not be. So we're going to try to cover all of our bases. I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to cloudaccess.net before we get started and then uh, kind of run through what exactly we'll cover today. And uh, you should all be able to hear this presentation through your computer speakers or your headset, or you can call the telephone number that was provided to you in the email you received when you registered. Um, now, we are cloudaccess.net, and uh, we are also demo.joomla.org. Joomla chose us to be the official host of the demo trial of Joomla, because our entire company is set up for Joomla. I'm going to assume that many of you are familiar with our platform, but if you're not, just so you know, you can launch unlimited free trials of Joomla through our platform, and each of those demo trials is active for 30 days, and at any point during the trial, you can upgrade to a paid hosting package, and uh, you can receive additional phone support. We're a unique hosting company because we're much more than hosting. We also offer support. We have human beings standing by ready to help you develop your Joomla site and that's something that truly separates us from the rest. But enough about that, we really want to uh, teach you today about upgrading your site to 3.0. So I'm going to assume that a lot of you have a 2.5 site and there are many, many benefits to upgrading to 3.0. Number one, um, Joomla 3.0 is mobile ready and the templates look great on all different types of devices, from smartphones to tablets and any other device, and that's truly um, what you want out of your out of your content management system these days is that responsive um, compatibility. It's also user friendly. There are many enhanced features in the administrator that um, make it much more appealing for users. But that administrator is also responsive, and you can edit the edit the uh, the application from any device too. There's an updated interface as I mentioned. It's more modern, looks pretty, and there are a bunch of other features, access control updates, security, advanced search updates. Not things we're going to talk about specifically today, although we can point you towards some resources if you're interested in learning more about Joomla 3.0. Now, first, we're going to talk about our clients. If you're hosted with us, we're going to show you how to manage your backups through your cloud access client area, and then we're going to show you how to upgrade that 2.5 site to the 3.0 version. Jen's going to kind of walk me through the process as if I were a client and I have a 2.5 site that's ready to, uh, we're ready to work with. Once we upgrade, we're going to talk about templates and module positions and how we're going to have to sort of set those things up again. And then after that, we'll test the site's functionality just a little bit. And this is really quite a simple process. It's not going to take that long to do the upgrade itself. At that point, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about sites that are not hosted with cloudaccess.net. Okay? We're going to talk about creating a development site, launching a demo trial through Cloud Access. We're going to talk about uh, the Akiba backup. We're going to show you how to upload that to your site and how to upload your backup file that you create with Akiba backup and kickstart a kickstart file. Um, we're going to do that using file transfer protocol. We'll show you how to complete the kickstart process and then how to restore your backup file into the cloud access network. Okay. At that point, we're going to show you how to change your domain name. So both your, your, your site, uh, so your site is live, your development site. And you know, this is the first time we've done a webinar like this. We are going to move quickly. And, you know, we're going to host this a number of other times. We had 218 people register for today's event, and we're going to host it again. Um, we are recording. We are going to post a copy of this to our YouTube channel. I'll show you that in just a moment. So, you know, if you get turned around in the process, don't worry about it. There will be a recording of it available later. 
just talking a little bit about the release cycle and which version of Joomla might be right for you. Uh, well, of course, we're advocating for 3.0 sites for everybody right now. And 2.5, I really wanted to show you this because you don't have to panic, okay? It's not like you have to upgrade today, um, but throughout the next year, the next calendar year. So by March of 2014, you really are going to want to consider that upgrade uh, and, and complete the upgrade. So you have about a year, but uh, I really admire the 218 people who are wanting to do this now, sort of beat the curve and um, just get it done with. You get all of those benefits by doing so. I'm going to close this presentation. Very quickly, I want to show you our YouTube channel. I'm going to post a copy of this webinar here later and it's, uh, we'll call it the Upgrade webinar, and it takes a few hours to get into YouTube, but it'll be here for you to re review, and this is youtube.com forward slash cloud access. We'll also post this on our site somewhere, and it will be available through GoToMeeting. And speaking of GoToMeeting, there is a slide out question and answer area to the right of your screen. Feel free to post a question that uh, if something occurs to you along the way, you want a little bit more information about, um, because we have so many attendees today, we can't promise that we can answer all questions, but we'll try to get to at least a few of them towards the end of the webinar. So here's the site we are going to work with today. Just a, this is a site I created during one of our old webinars for Joomla 2.5, and uh, Jen is going to talk us through upgrading. Jen, what do we need to do first? Yeah, well, this is good. So we can go over the site really quickly just to see. I think the first thing you want to do before you upgrade your site is to check your site to see what kind of extensions or things that you have installed on here that could be a, a problem after your upgrade because third-party extensions may or may not be compatible between the two versions. So the things that we have on this site is our slideshow. And let's see what else. The login module, that's a core Joomla. Uh, the menu items, those are core Joomla. So there's really the search module, that's a core Joomla feature. So other than the slideshow on this page, do we have anything else? Well, our template is a third-party template. So It we... is a third-party template. That's right. That's a good thing to mention, too. So this is our cloud-based template, which we know for a fact is only compatible with 2.5. So once we upgrade, we are going to lose this template. Um, if you are using a template that you want to keep after your upgrade, you want to make sure that it is compatible with 3.0 before you upgrade. And if not, then you'll have to choose another one. Okay. So I'm just going to scan through the site here. All of these are core Joomla features. Yep. Yeah, all, you know what? All of this is going to be core Joomla. We have a few locations posted. So the only thing we need to really be concerned about is the template itself and the uh, that slideshow. And we've already checked. Uh, we know that our slideshow is compatible, but the template is not. So when we do the upgrade, you'll see that. The template will stop working, but the slideshow will stay. So the next thing we want to do before we do any updates is we want to go in and take a backup of our site just in case uh, there does you know something does happen to go wrong we can always have that backup to restore it to so uh, we're going to go to our client area and cloud access so just to give an overview of this area if you are new to our platform this is the place where you'll manage and maintain your relationship with us you can do a number of things here including submitting support tickets uh, seeing all of your open support tickets launching new Joomla sites here which we'll do a little bit later you can uh, change all of your account details and things like this and uh, you can also manage all of your products and services. So all of these are websites that I've launched, most of them associated with the uh, webinar. I have four pages of them, actually. I'm going to go search for our site today. So here's our upgrade webinar site. And I'm going to go to uh, the Options button, hover my mouse, and I'm going to go to Manage to Backups. So we have a feature where you can manage your own backups. We did create one already. I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Backup to create a new backup for our site. It's going to ask me if I want to do the database and files, and we do recommend you do both. I'm going to go yeah. ahead and click 
click create and depending on the, you know the size of the site um, different backup. It can take some time right. yeah, to do. So what should uh, after the backups done Jen what do we do next? Yeah, so once the backup's done, then we're going to uh, we're going to go into the Joomla admin of our site. Okay. And then that's where we're going to do the upgrade. Just to point out, our backup is complete. We should go ahead and download these right right now, shouldn't we, Jen? You can. Yep, download them into your, onto your desktop, so you have them. Uh, they should stay in your client area even after. Um, we do the update, but for safety's sake, you can download them to your desktop, so you have them. I'll put them in my downloads folder. So that was my files, and here's my database. And this will take just a moment, but definitely keep those safe, and we do recommend that you don't keep all of your backups here that once you download them you do delete them because they do take up space and you're going to want to get rid of them uh, right and especially eventually. after the upgrade you'll want to delete these out if everything's okay because these will be backups of your 2.5 site and if you restore them you're basically going to return your site back to a 2.5 okay so I've got both my database and files backup downloaded and I'm just going to leave them in here for now, but of course we'd click these buttons to just get rid of them here. And Jen, we're going back to the administration area of our site. Yep. So what you're going to do is go to the control panel. Okay. And here it's going to check. So it's, right now it says that your Joomla is up to date if you look in the bottom uh, row of your icons. But if you click on that it's going to bring you to the Joomla update button. It says no updates are available because you're using the most current version of your 2.5 site. If you go over to the options icon in the corner, it's going to give you an option to, to change whether you want long-term support or if you go down, we want to change it to short-term. So if you click on that and then save and close, this will now show the 3.0 backup. Okay. So now we have 3.0.3 available. Do I click on install the update? Yep. All right. So we're downloading and we're updating. You know, Frank had a question while this, um, while this process is, uh, does he need to pick a template that's compatible with 3.0 before upgrading? Um, that's a good question. It just depends on the template. Some developers have templates that are compatible with both meaning that you can use it on your 2.5 site and if you upgrade it will still remain on your 3.0 uh, but some are just the same templates different versions of the same template so you may need to re-upload that again the 3.0 version of the same template that you're using once you upgrade right so it's you just something to check with the developer on and you should also know that your 3.0 version as you're gonna see here it comes with a, a, a template already that you can begin with so your content will, you know, you will be able to use a template right away. Right. It's, it's All a, versions come with a default template. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good template too. Yeah. All right. So you saw that our, our actually our administration area uh, changed here because we yeah. updated to Joomla. Yep. But it's a whole new look now. Yeah. Let's get back to our control panel and kind of show off 3.0. If you've never seen a Joomla 3.0 administration area, this is what it looks like. The same features are here and more, but there's just additional functionality. The quick, uh, the quick icons have been replaced with quick links over here off to the right side and the same options in the upper menu. And um, let's kind of just illustrate. I'm going to minimize the screen and kind of show you how this is responsive in nature now, how I can, from a smartphone, edit my content and everything looks pretty darn good. And we should probably go to the front end and refresh the page, right? Yep. And we're going to see a pretty drastic change. Once we refresh. Oh, you know what? We're seeing a white screen because our default template is still... Is still set to the cloud base, which isn't compatible. Right. So let's talk about what uh, our options are. First, we should go over to the template manager here. 
under Quick Icon Icons, of course, also available under the Template Manager under Extensions drop-down. Notice our default, uh, so we upgraded, and when we upgraded, we got additional templates. So we have additional 3.0 templates along with the 2.5 templates that were originally in our site. So we were using this template, the Cloud-based 2.0. That's our default. However, that is not compatible with 3.0, so we're going to want to go to Protostar. Protostar is the recommended uh, template, what we recommend you use as you start developing your 3.0 site, but of course you can go and get another template. So let's change this default template to 3.0, and now we get our green message. Before in Joomla 2.5, these messages were blue, and they are green now. I'm going to refresh the front end again and just show you that here's our site. And what we have to do next, Jen, is reconfigure or set up our articles, our menu structure again. And, right, uh, yeah. And again, this is going to be different for everybody, too, because um, our cloud-based template in 2.5 was using a, the Gantry framework. It was built off of that, and the Protostar does not use it. uses, is it the Bootstrap framework? It is, yeah. So all of the module positions are gone. Now, we didn't lose any of those modules when we upgraded. They're just now in different positions. So if you have a template that, if your 2.5 template was Gantry, and then your new 3.01 is also Gantry, you may not need to change those module items. You just need to update your template, and everything will show back up if they're in the same position. Hey, but since we're going to a different framework, Oh, go ahead. Well, I just want to I just want to mention a couple questions here. Um, some good ones. Uh, number one, uh, let's see. Richard just had a quick question about the icons. Those big icons have been replaced with these smaller ones. Uh, I don't know if there's an extension available for that. There are different administrator templates that you could look around. But these are two really good questions, Jen. Both well, one's from Nate, one's from Veronica. They both are about the same thing. Nate asked, would you want to do this on a development site before doing this on a production site? And Veronica said, if my site is live, how do I upgrade to Joomla 3.0 without my customers seeing the transition? So what we're going to do next is kind of from an from a outsider's point of view, you're going you're gonna to want to launch a new development site. Right, Jen? Right, so there's uh, there's two ways of doing that. Yes, you can launch a new development site and copy your 2.5 site onto it and upgrade. That way it gives you time to play and adjust and make all these changes. Um, since our site isn't very large and we're just doing it quickly, um, you can temporarily turn it offline or put it in maintenance mode so they don't see that. But you can still log in, see the front end of the site, and go through the changes just while turning it off momentarily. Again, it's going to depend on the size of your site, how many extensions you're going to have to update, and how much configuration you're going to have to do after that. So it's going to be different for everybody. But those are two options. Right. Uh, it's a really good question. Um, but assuming, assuming their sites are live and they've got clients and their people are using the site, you'd launch a, new, uh, launch a new site, copy that back up over, and then do the upgrade. And then once you're done, we can help point that domain name. So it's a seamless transition, really. Yep, yep. And then you, you can change the domain name right in your client area. And we're going to go over that later, too. So that's another... Uh, something else they can do once everything's moved over and up, they can just change the domain and be on their way. Yeah. So good questions, very good questions. Uh, so we are going to just show you very quickly what to do with, um, you know, we had our logo. We had our logo in place. We had our articles and our menus in place. All of that content is still in our new site, right? So if we go to our content manager, where we go to our article manager, we can see we have all of our articles. Go to our categories, we have all of our categories. And things like modules, all of those things are in place. They're still here. However, they're using the old positions, and uh, they're not going to show up in our new template. So first, let's go to our main menu, for instance. And 
looking on the front end of the site, there's no menu in place. I'm actually going to go to cloudaccess.net and show you an area where you can learn more about the Protostar template if you want to develop with that template. Frank asked something about the Protostar. In our early 3.0 webinars, we were recommending the Meet Gavern template from Gavic Pro, uh, which is a good 3.0 template. We're using Protostar now because it comes default with the site. And under Products and Templates and Themes, just to show you here, we do have links to third-party template developers. Um, this is kind of our approved list of developers, and you can go browse through and look at different templates that are ready for 3.0. Um, we do have a lot of information about Protostar, though, as well, and especially that module map is here and ready for us to use. So this is going to show us all of our positions for this, uh, for this template that comes with your site. Um, I'm going to want to pick the navigation position for my main menu module. So this is what you'll have to do is in the back end go through and reassign all of those positions. So let's first go, we're not going to do the whole site, but we're going to go to Protostar right here and select navigation for this. And we're just going to reassign the menu. So we'll save it and then return to the front end and refresh and refresh again. Oh. I think by default our modules are assigned to no pages too, so we'll have oh, to go. Oh, it may, yeah, I think with the upgrade it does turn them off. Yeah. Or so that you have the chance to go in and update them. So let's save that again and then return. And so we see our main menu. And this menu, um, by default, it's actually styled vertically. We're going to change that very quickly to be horizontal. That is under options, under advanced options, this is a menu class suffix of nav pills. And we'll save. All of this information is available. Um, elsewhere, I should probably show you our knowledge base. I think it's space nav pills, actually. And so now we get our uh, horizontal menu. At cloudaccess.net, other than this area to learn about Protostar, just to point out that we have a knowledge base full of hundreds of how-to documents and videos. And if we go to Joomla 3.0, browse our categories here, all the way at the bottom of this list, I've created a Protostar responsive template, a series of articles to learn more about your Protostar template. So, uh, Jen, should we do a few more? Yes, I think we can um, we can uh, turn on our slideshow again. Okay. Um, and then we can do a sidebar one. You had a, I think you had a side navigation. Yeah. So we were using the slideshow CK, and this is actually compatible. I checked with the developer to see if it's compatible with 3.0, and it is. So I'm going to open this up and change this, and we're going to change this to the banner position in the Protostar template. So. What's cool about um, this now is I can actually type in and just search for the position this way. So I'll add the banner position here and menu assignment only on the pages selected. So this one did go through. That's oh, interesting. Oh, okay. So it must be the ones. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what ones. And so our slideshow is going to show back up. And uh, I just want to illustrate that this too is a responsive template. And so it's going to respond. Our menu becomes vertical. Our uh, slideshow resizes. Slideshow resizes, and our content kind of falls in line. So it's really nice. Um, what next, Jen? Yeah. Okay. So now that we have this updated, if you wanted, you what you would do is you would keep going through all of your modules, turning them back on, reassigning them to those positions that correlate with the template that you're using. And again, like I said, if you're using the same template, just a 3.0 version, you may not need to go through this. Um, so after we've done this, then I guess what we could do next is, and everything's up and functioning the way you want, then you can go back in and remove those backups out of your client area. Okay. The process to update a 3.0 site, again, if it's simple and, you, and you're organized with it, doesn't take long. I mean, that's all, the, that's all it takes to upgrade. We now have a 3.0 site. 
So um, for us, what we would do is we would just go ahead and remove these backups. And then you take another one, a new one, so that we have a new upgraded, you know, most recent version of our 3.0 site. Okay. I'm not going to delete them now. Can I just create a new backup? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let's just create a new backup. And, you know, Kathy had an interesting question. Is there an upgrade support available for those of us who do not have developer programmer in-house? Jen, our support team, if they're hosted with cloudaccess.net, we'll, we'll help them. We'll do a managed upgrade with them, won't we? Yep, yep. We can help walk through the steps and, and go through. And if there's any questions during the upgrade, um, we can help answer those questions and, and go through that with them, sure. So that's part of our, our service here, Kathy. Hopefully that answers your question a little bit. Um, we do have a lot of questions showing up, and that's really great. We are going to try to get through most of them, probably answer more towards the end. So, Jen, we have our 3.0 backup created. What's our next step? So now that we are um, now that we're done with our upgrade, I mean we would then take our site live, but we're going to move on from here and go and talk about how we would upgrade the site if it were not a hosted at cloudaccess.net. Okay, and this and a lot of yeah, and a lot of these steps will relate to you if you want to have a development area too. Okay, so if you right. want if you wanted to launch a new site and have that development area. I think Veronica asked that question earlier, so this will relate a lot to that. So I'm going to want to restore an older backup, right? Right. So we're going to actually turn our site back into a 2.5 site again. Um, so, And for us, it's going to be easy to do because we're just going to restore one of these old backups that we took. So the one we took towards the beginning of the webinar, I'm just going to drag and drop the files and database in here. And I'm going to continue with the import. And it's really that simple if you're hosted with us. If you're not hosted with us, we're going to show you a few steps that you can do to create a backup on your own and then how to bring that into our network in just a moment. So we'll wait just a second for this to be complete. And get a green message. Return to the home page now. I'll refresh the page. And you see now we're at our old 2.5 site again and refresh the back end. I might be asked to log back in, which I am, and 2.5. So um, now let's treat this as if we were um, a, a, not hosted here, Jen. Should we launch a development site first? Uh, yes, we can, absolutely. Okay. So, so we'll go back to the client area and we'll just illustrate how to launch a new site very quickly. Click on the big blue launch Joomla application button and you'll click on Joomla demo and this will just be a development site. And I'm just going to get our free staging URL. If you're new to us you do get a free staging URL that's live for 30 days. I'm just going to call this upgrade webinar 2. Click to continue. I'm going to be asked which version I should launch. And I should, um, I could launch the 3.0 right away, or I could do 2.5. I could restore my 2.5 site on the 2.5 version, or the 3.0. If I did 2.5, I'd have to upgrade like we just illustrated. Um, right, Jen? Right. So what we're going to do, because we're moving a 2.5 site over to us, then we're, so we're going to choose the 2.5 because if you choose 3.0 and then you move your 2.5 site over, it's going to change it back to a 2.5 site anyway. So we're going to start with 2.5 and then upgrade and it's going to change it to 3.0 for us. All right. I'll click to continue, go over my personal details. Remember, this is the free demo, no payment needed. Let's complete our order and the site's going to be launched. And while we wait for that site to be launched, we will get a welcome email, of course, with information how to access the site. We should talk about Akiba, Jen, I think is our next step. Right. And just a quick note, too. Um, you, if you are moving your site over to Cloud Access, we're launching a demo site because that's what we have and it's very small. But you'll want to check the size of your site before you move it because our demos are, what is it? It's a 500 megabyte space limit. So if your site is larger than that, 
and you're trying to move it over, it won't let you restore it onto a demo. So that's just something to be aware of. You may need to start with a five or a standard hosting plan if your site's too large. Okay. So let's next pretend that we are not hosted with cloud access and we don't have that fancy backup system where we can um, you know, back up or restore as you just saw. You're okay. going to want to go to the extensions directory at extensions.joomla.org and we've actually built our backup system upon the Akiba backup platform. Um, I'm going to search for Akiba here and this is, we, we hosted a webinar with Nicholas Diasinopoulos of Akiba who developed this component, an extremely popular component for Joomla. Um, I, think, I think Jenny said 47 million times this has been downloaded. So, wow. yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open up Akiba here. This is a non-commercial backup component that you can install into your site. So let's go here. Let's go ahead and download this. And I'm going to come down to Akiva Backup, choose which version I need. I'm going to be installing this into my 2.5 site. So I need this version here, 2.5.6 or later. So I'm going to get this, this version, right, Jen? Right, yep, and you can always check uh, your version of Joomla. They do have other versions, but you always want to take the most recent one, and they'll tell you which one's compatible. Okay, so I'm going to download this now. And I'll put this into my Downloads folder and save it. Remember, it's a zip file, the core backup zip. And while we're here, we actually need to grab another package. Isn't that right, Jen? Yes, um, so the, the Akiba the core Kivo one that you just downloaded, that's to take the backup of your site. Now we need the other one that will allow you to restore it onto another server, onto another instance. Right. So that is actually, I think you can still go back to the Akiba backup. Just go back a page. Right here? Or right here? Um, just go to their downloads tab actually at the okay. top. There we go. And we're looking for the Akiba kickstart. Yep. All right. So we need the kickstart file and again make sure we're getting the right version uh, let's see which version do we need I believe it's probably uh, the I think you could just, yeah just take the most recent yeah yep. here we go and we'll download now and I want you to notice that this is a uh, zip file 2. We're going to actually extract a few files from this zip file and upload them to our site using FTP. So let's save this. And now we're going to install the backup into our 2.5 site, right? Right. So we're going to go to the extension manager in 2.5. We're going to choose a file from our computer. I'll go to my downloads. And we're going to we're going to install the Akiba core backup zip file, not the kickstart. Okay, the kickstart comes later. So we're going to install Akiba, wait for that installation to be complete, which it is here, and then I'll go to components and I'll be able to access Akiba here. Um, there are a few things we need to do, um, basically just to agree to um, the terms and conditions, I suppose, and so yeah. When you ver when you first install Akiba, it runs through. It makes you agree, and then it's going to configure the software for your site specifically. So it's just a one-time thing when you first install it. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply the preferences. And yeah. this is that process. So it's just taking note of all the information on your server and your site and then it's just configuring the, pr the software for your individual site. Okay, Jen we've got a lot of questions showing up and again folks we're going to answer uh, I think the rest of those towards the end of this presentation. So
So just be patient and we will answer as many as we can. Okay, so we're finished. And we're going to do the backup now, right? Uh, yep. Yep. You so can also, just to point out that you can also go to the control panel and after you run through that process, if you did your backup later, this is what the Akiba control panel looks like and for 2.5 and you can click on this button to backup. So we'll create the backup and anything special I need to do here? No, it just gives uh, by default this little description of the date and backup taken. You can change that. You can also add a comment to your backup if you want to, but it's not necessarily. So just go ahead and click the button and All right. run through. So we're going to create the backup now, and um, I suppose I'll try to get to a question here. John has a question. Does support for 2.5 end in March of 2014? Well, we've been told a few things, and, you know, it's kind of... Um, it's really up to the community. You will stop seeing security patches and things released for 2.5 starting in about a year. Okay, um, It's kind of hard to put a complete um, time frame on that, but that is a really good question. So our backup's complete. We made a backup, and now we actually have to access our site using FTP, right? Right. So you can click on this, no, actually you have to click on the Manage Backups button, and you're going to download your JPA. Okay. So yep, yeah. I click yep, on so this button here. here. Yep. We'll click on this little button. And isn't there a warning we want to give for really large sites at this point? Right, so this little pop-up that comes up is saying that it can... You can't, again, depending on the size of your website, if it's very large, downloading the site through here um, can cause it to be corrupt. If that's the case, um, you usually can go into your site via FTP and get this APA uh, in other ways. You don't have to download it through here. But for the most part, you'll be able to download it. So go ahead and click OK. And it's going to download just like we did uh, the ones off of our server. We downloaded it just to our desktop so that we have it. And to note, th this is a JPA file. So we're going to refer to this as our JPA file. Then we'll save this. And that is complete. And so now we're going to access our site using FTP. Right. And? And we're actually going to restore this onto the, our new development site. Right. So um, actually, that site is launched, and I'm going to go to my uh, email and look for my Joomla welcome email. So I'm going to open this up, and this is my welcome email for my new development site, Upgrade Webinar 2. So no real need to go to this site. This is what the development site looks like right now, but this is going to change in just a little bit after we, after we do our upgrade. Uh, I'm going to go back to FTP. So this is FileZilla, what we like to use. Uh, just an FTP client. It's a way for you to interact with your Joomla site without actually using Joomla. Um, to get your login information, your host, username, and password information, we're going to go back to our Cloud Access client area. Here's our confirmation for our site that we ordered, our development site. I'll go to the home page, and I'm going to want to go find my original site. Not my not my second site I launched, but my original upgrade webinar. I'm going to go to the control panel. You actually want to log in to FTP from your to your new one. Oh I do want my new one? Yep. Okay. Because remember the old site is on the old server and the new one is the one that we're going to. I'm glad you're here, Jen. <laughs> okay. We're going to the new site. And I'm going to go to the cloud control panel, which is the place for us to access a lot of information about our server. Okay, we expose our IP addresses and things like that. You can see your domain status. You can access your database here, of course. Um, get application details about which version of Joomla you're running. You see we are using 2.5.9 here. And we do have error and access logs available through the client area, through the cloud control panel. But here, this is the information I need under FTP and SFTP SSH. I'm going to want to grab first my host name, so I'm going to copy this, go back to FileZilla, and paste that in there. 
come back here and I'm going to next grab my username, copy, go back to FTP and paste, and then I'm going to get my password. By default we hide the password. We'll copy this, put it in through FTP. By default this will go through port 21 which is what we need. I'm going to quick connect to the site. You see my command and response field populated, my site folders populated, and what what's next? Okay, so once we're restoring a GPA, so if you click under the HTTP Docs folder, this is the folder that holds your Joomla site. So you'll see all of the directories and files and things like that for that default Joomla site that we just looked at on the front end. It doesn't have anything in it but the sample data because we just launched it. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to clean out this folder so that when we restore our JPA, it, it, we get a clean copy and none of these old files are going to interfere. So what we do is we create a new directory. Click and on. Yep, click. click there and just right click and create a directory. And we're going to call it, you can call it whatever you want. I like to call it old site um, and then click OK. So this is just an empty folder, and now we're going to take all of the content from the HTTP docs folder and put it into that old site. So you can just uh, click on one, hold your shift key, click on the other, and then drag it in. And then do the same thing from the bottom up. There. So now the only thing in our HTTP docs is those old site. If you click into it, you'll see all those files again, but this is just temporary. It's easier, it's faster to move them into a subdirectory than it is to actually sit and wait for them to be all deleted. Um, so if we go back, again, if you want to just reference, if you want to go back to your home page, the front end of your site now, you'll see that it throws an error because there's nothing there. Okay. So yeah, so you get this just this test page because there's nothing to there's nothing for it to see. So we're going to go back to FTP and we're going to upload that JPA file that we that we took from the old server. Okay. So now I'm saying my... old server, even though it's on it's just from our old site. So here is my JPA file. And I can either drag or drop it in here or right click and click upload, right? Yep. And then along with this JPA, we're also going to need a couple of those kickstart files. So we'll actually need to go in and extract that kickstart zip so, file now. Just a question, Jen. Users like Veronica, who I think is hosted with us, she wants to mm -hmm. keep her site live and she wants to um, she wants to have the development site. She'd of course launch the development site she can just ask us to restore a backup of the 2.5 site to the development site. Isn't that right? Right. So again, if you want to restore the backup to the development site, this is an easy way to do it if uh, she wants to do it herself. If she's already hosted with us and just wants to launch one, we can, um, we can create that copy for her by just moving those backup files from our own system. Okay. So, but a JPA file is a a kickstart even on our own server is a quick way to move them from one site to another even on our server. Okay. So, next, do we need to extract a few files from our kickstart file here? Jen, are right. You there? So, we need okay. to go back to the kickstart. Oh. Let's go I'm to our Sorry, is my site? Yeah. So Let's go to downloads. Go back to your downloads. I'm going to extract here. the kickstart files here. Just open up these because we don't need all of them. And Jen, do you want to explain which files we need? Right. So now that we've extracted the kickstart file, the we actually only need three three files from this. We need the two jQuery files and then that kickstart.php. So we're going to go back to our FileZilla and just down upload those three files. So here's my 
unzipped kickstart folder. I'll go find those three files. The rest of them are just language packages. Isn't that, isn't that right, Jen? Right. Those are, and you may need those if you have other languages installed, but these are just, for any normal site, these will just, these are the only three you're going to need. All right. So I'm going to drag and drop those right here. And so what next? So now that that's done, we're going to go back to the front end of our site. Okay, so now that we're here, we're going to, this is our main URL, and we're going to do a forward slash kickstart.php. And click enter, and that will open the file from our server. Right. So, yep, this is just a, a quick information about Kickstart. Uh, you can just cancel this out. Just click that Escape. And we basically run through the Kickstart process. It's going to ask us a series of things. Uh, and basically, on this first screen, we're just going to click Start to start extracting. Isn't that right? Yep. Yeah, because the archive file there that you see, that's just the one that we uploaded. It looks for JPA files. So it would list all of them that you had in there. So, yep, now that it extracted the JPA, we're going to click Run the Installer. Okay, so now that we're here, um, this, is, this is the... Uh, just the opening page of a Keepa. So it's going to do an installation check. You want to make sure that all these are green. If you ever get a little red, you know, it's going to give you the recommended setting. If yours is for some reason different than what the recommended is, it'll show up in red and it'll just show your set setting. So you just want to check that all these are green and everything's good to go. Uh, then click the next button. Jen, are you there? Yeah, yeah, sorry. And then, okay, so now that we're at this one, it's the main database. So this is where we're going to pull information from our current site, and we're going to enter it in here. So the type of database we're going to walk through is, uh, yeah, we use MySQL I. With the, it's the preferred method, so we're going to select that. The host name, this is information we'll get from our client area again. Is that going to be this host name? Uh, it's going to go, actually, if you go into the application fold uh, tab. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Data, we're doing database, the MySQL tab. Okay. So here is your database name right there, um, the second one down. Yep, that one. So we're going to copy that and then click OK and then paste that in. And then the username and password. The username is actually the same. So the username that would be, yep, it's the same. But and copy and paste. Oh, it asks for the, oh, I'm sorry, so the database server host name. Right. Copy that one and paste that down into your database name. We've set that in the wrong spot. That one goes there. The host is DB. Oh, just DB. Yeah. Right here, just DB. DB. Now, again, these settings are the settings on our server. So because we're coming to us, this is where we would get this information. Um, and this is the information for the new site. You would have all this information for your old site too, but we're entering the new stuff in so that when we install it, it has all the right information okay. to be installed on our current one. The next thing we're going to need to do on the right-hand column is the database prefix. Okay. See, right now it's UIA, and we want to go back to our client area and check that because that will change as well. Um, go to the application tab for this one. 
here is your DB prefix. It's the app DB prefix um, on the left. Okay. See, it says UWL. So, yep, you can okay. copy that. And paste that in here. And then paste it in there, yep. And you want to keep the three letters plus the underscore. The underscore is important to keep there. Okay. And then we always want to drop the existing tables. So in case there were any in the database, we want to drop the ones that were there and replace them with the new ones. So that's all you need to do here. And then go ahead and click the Next button. Yep, so and was successful. So Next. Now we're into the site parameters. So again, here's your site name. You can check all these. Um, the one that we're going to want to check is the super user settings here. If you do nothing on this page, what it's going to do is it's going to assign a new super user with your old username and password from your old site. At Cloud Access, we automatically set up a username and password for you, uh, but this one will install a second one. So you can go ahead and you can actually leave these be because it's going to keep your current username and your password that you had on your old system. Okay. So you can actually just uh, click next on this page. Okay. And it's actually it's actually done. So this is now it's finished, and it says that even though it's done, there's a a file that was installed that we need to remove. So you just click this red installation, remove, yep, remove that directory. And now it says it's done. So you can click the green button and that's going to show us the front end of the site. Well, something oh. didn't exactly work, right? Yeah, look at that. Look at it showing just a should we get to the site's back end, perhaps? Yeah, let's go look at the admin and see. Uh, let's go to your cloud control panel, yeah, and see if it's... Okay. Okay, now if you go to the application tab, there should be a login. And just click that, click the login button to see if it works. This auto, yep. Okay, so there's our admin, uh, and that's there. So let's go and click the view site to see. It looks like there's. Let's go and look in FTP at the file system to make sure everything was uninstalled. Now, if we're in our HTTP docs, go ahead and just refresh this page. If you right-click in that where your cursor is and refresh, there, there's our administrator. There's all of our... Do we have to worry about the old site file? No, we can remove that, but that takes a while to uninstall the kickstart. So it looks like everything is there as it should be. Okay, so what next? How do we troubleshoot? So, yeah, I'm just looking to see um, what would have caused the... Let's go look. Uh, I'm just going to look at your site here on our system just to see if I can... Because all of the permissions, everything should be okay. Um, I'm going to go through my content, I suppose. Right, go to the admin and see if everything is all of your...
Okay, the, I just actually, um, on our system, I logged in and looked, and I did a heal on, on your site. Now the now the front end is showing up. Okay. So I mean, so it may have been a permissions problem, but I've never come across that. Okay. So in that case, because we are restoring on our network, we can always just give a call to the support team right. and we we can help. Right, and we can reset. If you're restoring onto a different server, then you're going to want to check your file permissions to make sure everything is is okay and that happened in the migration that you have access to everything. So that's what I did was I just went and reset the permissions on the site and that's what caused it to come up. So again we can do that for you. It's just a quick call and you can just say that you were restoring and we can run that for you. If you're on another server sometimes you can get SSH or they may be able to restore that for you but it's probably a call into your server admin at that point. Okay, so here is my original, or here's my second site where I restored, and here is my original. So my original site is still live, and my second site is um, now ready for development. So now what I can do in the back end here is, let me get back to the right one. What I can do here is now go ahead and do my upgrade. So what I'd want to do is get back to my control panel. And just as we illustrated before, we'd check for versions of Joomla. We'd go to our options area and do short-term support. Save and close. And we'd run through that upgrade process. Just as we did before, we'd install the update. And then we'd develop on our development site. And when we're done, when we're done developing, changing that domain name if you're hosted with, with us is very simple. And you can do that through your client area. I'm going to get back here. Let's go back a page. When you're done developing, you just go to your new site, Upgrade Webinar 2, and under Options, you would change your domain name. And you would just enter in your domain name. And Jen, does that take some time to take effect, or is that pretty immediate? Nope. As long as your domain name is pointing to us, um, and you change, you can change it. Um, all you do is you type it in here and hit change domain. It may take a minute or two just for the server to update, but it doesn't. As long as your domain, your .com, is pointing to our servers and everything is all set up, it uh, should go live right away. Okay. Now I do have a question before we get to other questions. And Jen, we hit that one hour mark pretty well with yeah. what with what we wanted to do, but. If, okay, so if I'm in my original site and I create a backup, okay, so I'm going to go to upgrade to the original. I created, I created backups before. I can um, download the backups that I've, I've already created. Is there any way for me to move this backup to my Upgrade Webinar 2 site? Um, the only way to do it is to download it onto your computer, and then you upload it into, if, do you still have FTP? Are you still logged into FTP? Yep. So uh, if you scroll up outside of the HTTP docs folder is a backups folder. So if you scroll there we go. right there. So you those two files that you downloaded onto your computer, Right here. The DB and the files. Yep. If you upload those into this backups folder and then go to your client area, you'll see that backup. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Super. So, I mean, that it's kind of clear in my mind, but I, I'm not sure if it's clear for everybody. We do have a lot of questions showing up. We're going to try to get to all of these, um, but we are going to host another one of these webinars. We had one little glitch today, and I'm sure Jen's going to want to try to troubleshoot to see how why that error occurred. Fortunately, she was able to heal the site, just run a quick heal, and and the content appeared. So perhaps, Jen, I'm thinking maybe we entered in the wrong username and password at some point? Maybe. I I don't know. I did run, I did run through that question with um, our server admin before we did this, and that was the only thing that we didn't do the same was that username and password for the super admin. Um, so I don't know if that was what affected it or not, but we'll run through it a couple times again before the next one. Okay, and just so you know, folks, if you come to our site, go to training and Joomla webinars, 
and come to our upcoming special webinars. We do have, we will run this one again. It was very popular, and we're going to host other webinars like a Virtue Mart webinar. If you're interested in having a shopping cart in your Joomla site, the Virtue Mart folks are going to stop by early on in April and host a webinar with us. We are going to do another Akiba Backup where Nicholas Dysonopoulos is going to come in and talk more about uh, Akiba Backup, but we also have several other webinars that we just scheduled, uh, including C Migrate, which is a WordPress to Joomla webinar that's coming. We have Ad Agency from iJoomla. We're going to be hosting that one. These are both in April, and um, Ad Agency is how to create advertisements on your site. And then um, Job Social is going to come in, and that's going to be April, uh, May 8th. The Job Social folks are going to stop by and show us how to set up a social Joomla site, like a Facebook Joomla site. Really exciting stuff. So we're going to get pages about those upcoming webinars here very shortly. Let's get to your questions, though. Uh, Richard has a question. And Richard asks, OK, so when you reassign those modules to different positions, other templates that use the same positions will be affected. Right? Um, you know, the template, it has to really be, use the same exact module name. And chances are really strong that none of your modules will appear, and you'll just have to go through that module manager and reassign. So while we're, we're, we're waiting, I'm just going to install this update, and um, we'll kind of run through that again. But you will have to reassign each of those positions. Ruth is here from New York City. Ruth asks, can I use the steps in this webinar to upgrade from the Stormy 2.5 template to the Utheme Infinite 3.0 template? Yes, you can. So what you'll do is you'll just come once that 3.0 site is upgraded. You'll come through. You'll install that template, of course. You'll install that template uh, through your extension manager, and you'll go through and reassign using the Utheme templates. Um, and Ruth asks again, do we still get support if we are, if we use a theme or a template other than Protostar? Well, um, we, you know, Ruth, you're a long time webinar attendee. We don't really support those third party templates. Um, we think they're great, but uh, we kind of refer everybody to those developers to if they have questions. But this, the process in this webinar will absolutely, um, will absolutely, uh, you know, be applicable to your, your new template. A couple of folks are asking, can I watch this later? And Jen, we're getting a lot of thank yous, but this, um, we are going to post this, we are recording, and I'm going to post a copy of this to our YouTube channel later today, youtube.com forward slash cloud access. So, um, Great. Yeah, Richard has a question. So if you are using one template, you make a change to a module in a different position, and that should affect other templates whose modules use the same. Wait, do we ask? I think we answered that. You'll have to reassign each of those positions. Right. Um, John asks a question, is the slideshow flash-based? If so, does it show on iPads? This In this 2.5, this is not flash-based. This does appear on um, on uh, iPads, on uh, Apple products. It's a JavaScript slider, which Yeah. Is nice. Yeah. Another we would point. rarely, well, maybe you would, but I would never put a Flash-based slider in my site. <laughs> OK. So. Yeah. General warning, Flash is becoming obsolete, right? Right. I mean, people still use it for video and things like that, but anything, and as far as web goes, there's so much JavaScript features out here, like this one. It's so nice using JavaScript that there's no need to use a Flash slideshow or gallery or anything like that anymore. Okay, Stephen asked a question. Hello, Cloud. Sorry for being late. Stephen, do you have a tardy pass? We're going to need to see your tardy pass. Frank, another question from Frank. I've delayed going to Joomla 3.0, waiting for extension upgrades. So here's a developer question for Jen. How difficult is it for a developer to upgrade an extension from 2.5 to 3.0? If an extension hasn't been upgraded to 3.0 by now, is it likely it won't ever be upgraded? Good question. 
Yeah, that's not necessarily the case. Um, I would hope that the developer of the extension could upgrade it fairly easily since they built it themselves. But um, if if it's not been upgraded by now, it's not that it may that it won't ever be. But you may just contact them and ask them if they have it, or they may have decided to recreate it and do a new version or something completely different. So. If you're looking at one specifically, I would contact the developer first and ask if they intend to upgrade, and if not, if they suggest something similar that they've done. Right. Right. I get them on the phone and just say, you have a cool component. I'm using it. But if yeah. you're not aware, the whole community is moving to 3.0. Are you going to come with us? Oz has a question. And I believe this was during the time we were setting up our old site folder in FTP. Is it possible to restore from Akiba Backup to Cloud Access account without having to delete all the files and going through the Akiba Kickstart? But I think we answered um, that question. You don't actually delete the old files, but you move them into the old site folder. And then you wrote, Oz, thank you with a smiley face. So I think we answered that. Please let us know if we can... Uh, if you need more. Yeah. And, and reason, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Nope. <laughs> the reason we do that is to get is to install that clean copy so that we know that there isn't any old files, especially if you're going, you know, from one version of 2.5 and you're in restoring an, an older version or something like that. We just don't want any files from the default site to be showing up in your backup or in your restore. So that's why we move them all out just to save any confusion. Okay, Frank, a different Frank is making fun of us now with our original restore where we had uh, where we had uh, the white the white space and Frank saying oh, yeah. maybe it's a minimalist site. Maybe. But Veronica had a question and Veronica, I know you're hosted with us. Uh, Veronica says since my site is hosted with Cloud Access, can I just create a 3.0 demo? Yep. Create my site on it and then point the domain once it's ready and delete the old one. Absolutely. So you would do that. You can point your domain very quickly. It doesn't sound like you have a, a whole lot of content. It doesn't sound like you have a ton of content. So you might just want to recreate and avoid the upgrade process altogether or just upgrade in the back end. Um, and, um, you know, depending on how many u users you have and, and all that. So I, I hope we answered your questions, Veronica. Frank, a different Frank. We have a lot of Franks in this webinar today. Yeah. When restoring an Akiba JPA backup, are the old dropped tables cleaned up, deleted by the process, or do we still have to clean them up manually? Right. By dropping the old tables, that's how, that's where, that means that they are deleted and removed. If you chose the backup option when you're restoring your site with Akiba, it would keep the copy, the old copy of those tables. Then you would have to go into your site, into your PHP My Admin, and delete those manually. So by dropping them, they do drop all the old tables and replace them with the new ones. Okay, good to know. Steven says, "Great, Jen and Charlie." Charlie. Oh, I'll tell Charlie he's doing a great job. Yeah. I'm Bernie. I, I, I did a good job, too, didn't I? F a different Frank. Oh, my gosh. Could the permissions issue probably result from the fact that FTP permissions were used to restore the site and FTP, FTP permissions should differ from the front-end access permissions? Yeah, I think that's something we need to investigate. That might have been the problem. That was my initial kind of knee-jerk reaction, so... We're going to investigate. The good news is is that if you're migrating to cloud access, you have hosting and Joomla support where we can heal that for you very quickly. John has a question. If you have more than one domain name pointing to your site, do you add them both? That's a good question. So in that, how do we handle that, Jen? If we're... Yep. So what you do is, are you in your client area? Yep. So what you're going to do is you're going to set one as your main domain so usually it's your dot com um, so right so under the change domain you would set your your dot com the one is your main domain and set it here and it will it will change it for you then go ahead and click the back button 
and under the Options tab, which you may not see it if it's a subdomain, uh, hover over the Options and see. Yeah, you don't see it here because do you have a one using a .com right now? Yep. Uh, yes, but I'm thinking your website. Go up to your products. Oh, okay. And just choose one. Yeah, so under the options, now here you'll see a manage alias. It's the third option. Okay. So this is where, so click on that. So now that we have it's GoScamping.com is the main site, and then adding an alias will allow you to add as many other domain names to the site. And then if you go to any one of them, it shows up with your main one. So you set your main site, and then you set as many aliases as you want. Okay, very good. Very good. Frank says, pretty clear. Mark has a question. Welcome back to the webinar, Mark. Could you review again the domain name change? Does the domain need to be at Cloud Access, or can it be elsewhere? So if the domain isn't hosted, um, registered and hosted with cloudaccess.net, as long, what, do they have to do anything, anything else at their, at their host, Jen? Right. If it's registered somewhere else, um, actually go to the Cloud Control Panel. Okay. Um, and it actually gives you a domain status. So if you do the upgrade and the options under the Cloud Control Panel. Mm -hmm. So if you're here, so you'll sh it'll show your current domain that you have set up, and then it shows the status. And if you click that drop down, um, yeah, so we're using the Cloud Access Name Server. So what this is going to do is if you change it and your .com is not pointing to us, it's going to show the status as offline or not available, and it'll show you where it's pointing. So there are two ways to point your domain to us. You can either change your name servers or you can change your IP address. And your IP address is listed down here, down below. Mm -hmm. um, it, this one is 199.116.77.5. So you can change your A record at your registrar to point to this IP address, and then that will take your site live with us. Or uh, where is it under the application tab where you see our name servers? Yep. Oh, wait. Yes. Uh, Server. Maybe it's just on your home page. Well, and I think those name servers will appear here. Um, well, it's saying that cloudaccess.net. But if you're at a, so go back to your home page, because I believe they show up in their sidebar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and scroll down. Yep, 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 right here. Yes, so our name servers are ns1.gridfest.net and ns2. So the other way to do it is at your registrar, change your name servers to us, to these ns1 and ns2. Then, uh, your, so either way, we'll take your domain live on our server. Okay. The difference is you change the name servers if you want to manage email here through us and all of your DNS settings. If your email is already set up at your other uh, registrar, then you'll just change the A record. Okay. Thanks for the question, Mark. We're getting a ton of questions. Steven says, great answers. Jen. Frank says, Franks love Joomla. Franks do apparently love Joomla, Frank. <laughs> Steven says, sorry, Bernie. <laughs> You're wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, just getting some smiley faces. Franks love Joomla. Andy says you're doing a great job, Bernie. Well, thanks. Let me get back to some more questions. Um, Frank, I, I'm not sure which Frank, but Frank says, "Well done, guys. Enjoyed the demo. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to give upgrading to Joomla 3.0 a go, a go just now on our dev site. That's great." Tim says, "I came in late. Did you say this webinar will be posted to YouTube? Absolutely, at our YouTube channel." We'll be here later today. Kevin says, in the process of building a new site, is there any major issues, limitations with Joomla 3.0? Because I'd like to build on 3.0 if possible. No, you know, uh, man, 3.0. I would say at this point, no. Yeah. There are a, a tiny couple little bugs. Um, so just kind of to, to illustrate, I'm going to go to the module manager. I'm going to reassign that menu module. Just there's tiny little bugs, and they're going to be fixing these. Um, I'm going to put this in that navigation position.
for Protostar here quickly. But, you know, they actually just did a bug squash here last weekend, and um, they probably fixed a lot of these in the, in, the, in the next version. Let's see, where is that Protostar template? In the next version, those may be, may be fixed. So let's save and close. I'm probably going to have to go to my template manager as well, make sure I'm using Protostar. And then, is this my site? Yeah. Oh, remember, we need to assign that main menu to pages. Yep, and while you're in here, you want to add that nav pills. That's right. Let's do all, and then advanced options. Nav pills, again, this is what gets it to be horizontal. It's space nav pills, by the way. We'll save and close, and now this will show up, but just to illustrate, this is a text separator menu item, and it has three drop-downs under the original 2.5. Of course, the text separator works with the drop-downs, but just a little bug that the, the, the sub-menu items uh, aren't appearing, and I believe that's in the, in the main menu module as well. But, yeah, we'll show those sub-menu items. But for some reason... The drop-downs will appear, but that menu item appears um, strange, right. so strangely. So for now, you can change that to a external URL, and that will fix that, but it is just a quick bug. Hopefully, it will be fixed soon. Right. And there is the workaround, as Jen mentioned. We change this to an external URL, point it to no URL, and those will appear. So it's, for your question, are there major issues? No. In fact... There's a ton of benefits. Ruth from New York says, thank you with an exclamation point. Oz says, thank you for the presentation with a smiley face and have a great re weekend with a smiley face. Um, Carlos, one question, exclamation point. Upgrading to 3.0 from 2.5.9 has the same risk than was from 1.5 to 2.5? Well, uh, Jen, you're probably more suited to answer that, but... Well, I don't know. I mean, it's not necessarily a risk, but again, just as we mentioned, when going from 1.5 to 2.5 or 2.5 to 3.0, the risks that you're having is your extensions and your templates. You're going to potentially lose those, or they may not function properly when you change because you're changing a version of Joomla. So the, it's different from upgrading within 2.5 itself or upgrading a complete to a completely new version, which is 3.0. So in a sense, yes, there are the same risks, but on the other hand, 3.0 is, is the up and coming. It's the one that's going to be around, and after they stop supporting 2.5, you're going to have those. It's going to end up having those same security vulnerabilities as 1.5 does now. Okay. Cheryl has asked, great. Hi, great, as usual. When will that we be able to register for the repeat of this webinar? I don't know. Jen and I will pick a date later today to do that. Um, and Jen wanted to do it tomorrow. She wanted to come in on a Saturday. But I said, you I, know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it Saturday. Hugh, if module positions remain the same in three templates, will they show up immediately? Um, that's a really good question. Um there is a ch slight chance, I suppose. Uh, most, more than likely, you're going to have to go back through the back end and reassign those positions. Um, right, because as you saw in ours, it actually turned it off. We had our menu assigned to all pages on the 2.5 site, but it actually turned it off and assigned it to no pages when we upgraded. Franks love Joomla, and one of the Franks says, thanks. Thanks from Frank. We're getting a number of questions about core Joomla 2.5 features, um, I want to direct everyone to our webinar page, our webinars page. Please come back to one of our free daily webinars for getting started with 3.0 or one of our open forums. We'd be glad to jump in a 2.5 site and show you some of those 2.5 features during that webinar, especially in an open forum. We answer a lot of 2.5 questions. Um, Brian, it appears that you attended late. We are, you know, we scheduled for an hour and a half for this and we're approaching that time. Sorry, we had that miscommunication of time. Again, though, this will be live later on YouTube for you to review. 
Thanks for coming in anyway. Nicholas, if I wanted to upgrade to 3.0 and build a whole new site with a new template, but use my existing content, is this possible? Yeah, we just kind of illustrated that entire process. So um, I'm not sure if you, were, if you were attending from the beginning, but again, you might want to come to the YouTube channel here to rewatch this a little bit later today. Richard, if I had a DJ image slider at 2.5, when I upgrade to 3.0, I had to reinstall DJ image slider to 3.0, losing my data. I had to recreate it. Is that the process with all extensions at 2.5 to 3.0? Not necessarily. You see that um, we have this image rotator, which is the slideshow CK, and that is in my site for 3.0. All I have to do with that one is reassign the position. And I want to go look for Into that. Into banner, you type it in. Oh yeah, banner. Let's reassign that one and save. And that will appear on my new site. So not necessarily. You'll just have to check with that developer to see if it's ready. And if the version that you downloaded for your 2.5 site is also compatible with 3.0, it's possible that you could upgrade that extension while in the 2.5 site, and then it would work in your 3.0 site as well. Right. Again, you, it's best to get a list of all the extensions, third-party extensions that you're using, and contact those developers beforehand, especially if you have a lot of content that you don't want to lose, uh, just to make sure the exact steps. Some of them may actually have their own separate process to upgrade their extension to 3.0 uh, that you'll need to either run through before or after. So that's something to contact them about individually before you run through the process. All right. We have a few, we have a lot of more questions and only a few more minutes. Again, please come back to one of our webinars. We'd love to help you in the future. We'll take a few more questions though. Um, a lot of people saying thanks and perfect. Um, Jody had an interesting question. How often do Joomla upgrades make our sites obsolete? Well, you know, I would say the trend, oh, every few years you're going to want to make sure you're up to date. The thing is, uh, when we were updating from 1.5 to like a 1.7 or a 2.5, that kind of caused some headaches because the upgrade, it actually wasn't this easy. And if you saw this process and you're thinking this was complicated, it was actually quite, quite a bit more complicated. And people were having to recreate entire sites. And that's what we're seeing a lot right now is folks who are using 1.5 and they didn't do their upgrade, their sites are being hacked and, um, you know, some bad things are happening. So every few years, just make sure your, your content's up to date as possible. But moving forward, Jody, it's going to be kind of like a one-click upgrade process um, for, most, for most versions. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Frank, one of the Franks says, you guys make a great team. Thank you. It's a pleasure to attend. Thanks for attending. Okay. Steven's going to try Akiba with his development version. Tim has a question. This is what I was planning to do. Will there be any issues that I might come across? To create a backup on our main site using Akiba. Create a demo site. Restore on the demo using Akiba. Do the upgrade and troubleshoot. Back the demo using Akiba restore the demo over the main site using Akiba. Jen, did that make sense to you? Yes, uh, that's actually a great way to do it. Um, and you can, once you restore your site, again, if you're um, on a different server, if you, um, and you're restoring your Akiba, you just want to make sure that everything, you know, you have all the information for your that you're uh, for the site that you're going to all of your database information your login stuff but yep that should work for you perfectly okay Akiba does make it easy because it packages up your database and all your files into one complete file it makes it easy to move back and forth okay the two. good question Tim Tim has been in our webinars a lot um, a couple folks are typing in questions that are not complete sentences at least write in complete sentences so we can read your questions. Um, 
got a question here to show our YouTube channel again. This is youtube.com forward slash cloud access. Stephen says, I love the cloud people at cloud access. Well, we love you, Stephen. Kevin says, great webinar, great job, guys. Thank you. Frank says, does that menu issue appear when the menu is created nat natively in 3.0? Uh, depends on your template, I believe, with the nav pills. I think that's what you're referring to. Right. Or if it's the um, the text separator. I, I don't know if the text separator is an issue on all templates or just on just on that the default one. Okay. Guillermo says thanks Bernie and John. So John's in the next room. We'll have to tell John he's doing a good job. John and Charlie in the webinar. Who knew? Crazy. Stephen, 3.0 is so easy compared to 2.5. Way to go, Joomla. I agree. Okay. Carlos, the problem is that my websites are so complex to update some components and plugins because still not the bird. Yeah, I know. I know it. You have a pretty complex site. You know, you're, there's some work. There's some work. But I think the benefits outweigh the work, Carlos. Um, yeah, a lot of people saying thanks. And so Guillermo has a question. Does Cloud Access develop a special template for 3.0? You know, we don't because we just, uh, when we first started this company, we thought we'd be a template development company, extension developer, hosting, you know, support, all things Joomla. But we kind of uh, quickly, well, not too quickly, if, uh, well, maybe a year ago, we stopped with template developing. And uh, we just we promote the, the Protostar template that's in 2.5 and several other template developers as well. Okay. So, Harry Yonato. Harry Yonato, I have a template for 2.5. Will it work in 3? You'll have to contact your developer. Um, you'll have to contact your developer to see if that template works. Hugh says, give Jenna Ray's great information. I agree. I'm just kidding. Steven says, should I uninstall my old extensions? If they're not compatible, absolutely. If, if, if <laughs> <laughs> you should install those. If you need to just update it, then update it. But if it's obsolete, get it out of your site, most definitely. If it's disabled, chances are strong it's not going to cause an issue. But you never know. And just get rid of everything that you don't need. That's a good point. And you might also want to go through and uninstall all those 2.5 templates, um, the default ones, and then any other 2.5 templates that you have that you know aren't compatible. It's just going to save any confusion down the road. Okay. Um, let's see here. We have a lot more questions, but unfortunately we're, we've hit our time limit. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending. I want to encourage you to come back to some of our other webinars. We're going to have many in the future, and uh, we can answer your questions here. If you are a client of ours, you can um, you can absolutely submit a support ticket. We can review this information with you. Remember, we have a lot of questions actually about the Protostar template. You can always come to cloudaccess.net and come to our knowledge base. You can head to Joomla 3.0. Come down here. We have Protostar Responsive Template. We had a few questions about making the Protostar um, widescreen, which is possible. And this is a static or fluid layout, and that option is right here. Your static and fluid, it kind of makes that site either in the container or outside. We had three or four questions about that. So thanks for attending, everybody. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in a webinar again very soon. Jen, do you want to say goodbye? Yes, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for coming and come back again. Those 3.0 webinars will help. Uh, once you upgrade, it will help you get familiar with the system again. And we're here to answer your questions, as always. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.